Welcome back to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Beirut, and we're continuing our series of interviews on the modern history of Lebanon. We're joined again by Fawaz Trabusi. He's a professor at political science and history at Lebanese American University in Beirut, and he's the author of A History of Modern Lebanon. Thanks for joining us. Pleasure. Why did Israel attack Lebanon in 2006? Well, of what we know now, I'd venture and say it was mainly an American-driven decision with the idea of scoring a neat victory against what the Bush administration considers terrorism. As you know, there wasn't great victories, neither in Afghanistan or Iran. What we know now is that the Israeli army had proposed after Hezbollah had abducted the soldiers on the borders, a four-day classical hit against uh, establishments, against Hezbollah posts, uh, the attempted assassination, and then negotiate. And why even do that? I mean, we know Hezbollah kidnapped a couple of soldiers, yeah. but that had happened before. It doesn't have to lead to such a full-scale no, incursion. Exactly. I think. I, I mean, of what we know now is that the army did not did not propose a full-scale uh, uh, incursion. It it, uh, it suggested four days of bombardment of the same type that they usually have done twice before, when they had soldiers uh, abducted and then under undercover start secret negotiations for the release. Now, what happened? Uh, was that Israeli sources, as the Olmert administration called for a uh, full-scale uh, war. My hunch is that uh, the Olmert administration thought it will score a victory against Hezbollah, and that would be and uh, looked upon as a good advance in that unfinished, unfinishing uh, war against terror. Some of the analysts have said that, uh, and it's I th people like Cy Hirsch, but a lot of people were talking that Bush and Cheney were quite committed to, a, particularly Cheney, to an attack on Iran, and that they always thought that an attack on Iran could trigger a Hezbollah attack on Israel, and so Israel, because they also were interested in an attack on Iran, decides we better take out Hezbollah's capacity to hit us. It could be one possibility, actually. It doesn't negate the fact that uh, you would have also couched it as a big victory in the war against terror. I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, put that beyond them. But the, the important thing is that it turned, uh, it turned sour. One thing that's not clear, I think, to people, to, to what extent, if at all, was Hezbollah launching, other than kidnapping the soldiers, what fighting was going on? Was there rockets going from Hezbollah into no. Israel? No, before the war, no. Before, no, no, 2000, no. before the that war. That was the only operation. Hezbollah had limited itself to this idea. I have prison, there are Lebanese prisoners in the jail of Israel. I want to bring them back, all of them. And to do this, the, best, the, the only possibility is any kidnapping. It's worked before. Hundreds were released. Now it can work. Actually, Hassan Nasrallah did uh, overtly say that we had expected a four-day intensive bombardment. We did not expect. Now, Nasrallah is the leader of yeah. uh, Hezbollah. Secretary General of Hezbollah, of course. He said we did not expect a full-time war, but I would add they were ready for it. I mean, the, the strong point about Hezbollah is that though they did not expect more than a four-day, five-day war, they were ready for a long, prolonged uh, war. I don't think the Israelis had enough intelligence about Hezbollah, and I don't think the Israelis had any knowledge about the very sophisticated weapons that Hezbollah had developed, especially the anti-Merkava uh, weaponry, the anti-tank weaponry, the Merkava being the very famous Israeli invincible tank. Uh, it so happened that Hezbollah fighters had trained uh, in all kinds of anti-tank weaponry against all kinds of Merkava tanks, which was the most important, actually, victim of the... Of now, the now, this war. really was, you could say, a preemptive war in the sense that there was not... Uh, Hezbollah had not done much to attack Israel, but the Israeli onslaught was profound and vicious, including bombing the airport, yeah. bombing sections of Be Beirut, and thousands of civilians died. Yeah, I mean, this, this has become classical 
And I don't think the Israelis never ever learn from it, actually. And this is why it's a war of uh, complete destruction without any strategic or tactical importance, because they've done it all the time. They bomb the infrastructure of the Lebanese state and the economy, and they try to occupy land. They've been doing it since 1978. They occupy till the Litani River. Then there is some form of uh, uh, solution and they leave. And then they come back. And this is what they tried to do that time. Uh, bombard even heavier all over the Lebanese territory. And then try to occupy southern Lebanon up to the Litani River. And this is where they failed. Because once they decided to down their troops on the ground, uh, actually, they met with very fierce uh, resistance since most of the major uh, villages, towns, and cities of that region were very well armed with uh, a lot of militia defenses and very sophisticated fighters. I mean, you, you, we're talking about people who've been fighting Israel since 1982. So you've got 18 years behind, uh, more, 20, 23 years, 24 years behind those uh, fighters. Also a new generation of fighters who are, who are quite, quite sophisticated in the way they use their, uh, the weaponry they have. Militarily, this, the uh, campaign inside Israel and around the world was seen more or less as a defeat of Israel, a victory by Hezbollah, in the sense that the objective of the Israelis was to destroy Hezbollah's capacity, and they didn't. Uh, but not only that, it seemed to have strengthened Hezbollah's position politically inside Lebanon. Definitely. I mean, it was, it was a victory for Hezbollah. It was a defeat for Israel in the sense that the avowed aims proclaimed in the first two days, three days of the war, none of them were achieved. And, and it was a military fiasco for, uh, for the Israeli army in, in more than one sense. I mean, apart from the fact that it always had air superiority concerning tanks and holding uh, to ground and infantry. I think they were quite uh, defeated. They couldn't even reach the Litani River to encircle and besiege the Hezbollah uh, fighters, which was the, the aim you could read into their military uh, strategy. They had declared occupying a number of towns which it, it was revealed that they were not in the head, and they lost a lot. So that boosted the morale of uh, Lebanese in general. It strengthened Hezbollah without any doubt. It transformed it into the major power among inside the sect, inside the Shia. It swelled the ranks of the fighters and of the militiamen. And, uh, and of course, uh, good sections of the uh, Shiites now moved from uh, Amal to, uh, to Hezbollah. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Fawaz Trabusi.